clothing. I see this amazing logo, 2013. You want to talk to us about Gamel clothing? I mean, who is this brother I have with me today? Okay, so Jamel Clothing um, is a lifestyle brand. Mm. We specialize in locally made um, apparels, um, and we use um, these, our typical Ghanaian cultural settings to create our designs so that Ghanaians and Africans can relate to it. Mm. And we are more um, particular about the details and the finishing that we give to our client because our client satisfaction is our priority. Mm -hmm. So basically, we are a Ghanaian fashion brand. Okay. Yeah. Ghanaian fashion brand. Now, before we talk about all these beautiful things I'm seeing here, I see a very beautiful lady in typical African stuff as well. Let's look at the brain behind Jamel clothing or Jamel clothing. Yeah. I gather that you went to KNUSD. Yes, I did. Studied medicine. Yes, um, I specialize in herbal medicine. Okay. Yeah. And why would you want to then switch into fashion? Because in the first place, I mean, as a kid, when we were growing up, everybody, your parents want you to be a doctor. They want you to be a lawyer. They want you to be a pilot. We as kids even had wild dreams, what we wanted to do. Do. And you get into this profession, study all these, all the hassle through tech, I know. And yeah. then you say after everything, no. I don't want to practice and I want to do fashion. Why would you want to do that? All right. So uh, everything started in 2013. That is why you see from our logo, we okay. said since 2013. Mm. So in 2013, whilst on campus, uh, uh, it was time for us to go for um, our faculty dinner. And I had some African um, prints in my um, wardrobe. Okay. So I took it to a tailor and to my dismay, I was highly disappointed. Mm. So I told myself now, if there were people like me, yeah. who would want to always look African. How do they get these things at the right time, time. With, with, with the right settings and with the right finishing? Mm. So I decided to research into it. And I'm one person who likes to coordinate a lot and come up with good stuff. I'm very good at organizing things. So I decided, okay, now let me come out and see how best I can help this industry. And one thing too, um, I realized that Maybe from my part, my part as my profession, it's going to be very easy for me to get a job when I leave school. Of course. But there are a lot of people out there who leave the university and the tertiary institutions, they come out and they don't get jobs. And I mean, I have friends like that. A lot of them. So how do we bridge this gap? If all of us want to get into the job sector where we go out and go and look for jobs, then who should create the jobs? Mm. So this is what forms my decision that now, okay, I think fashion is in one area or one industry that can accommodate a lot of people. people. As I'm talking to you now, um, I have directly employed about eight people. Yeah. And indirectly, I'm dealing with about 15 different people who get monthly um, um, salary from me. Wow. So it, it tells you that one or the other, we are contributing to the economy. Mm. So I decided now, let me go into it. And if I want to go into it, then I have to do it well. Yeah. So I have to devote my time. So that is how I started my fashion um, business on campus. So you started on campus even on before campus, you graduated? Yes, that was in 2013. And funny enough, I started this business with no money. Not even that's, one that's something. City. That's something I wouldn't want to... I mean, it's, it's difficult when you say you started with no money. I mean, look at yes. this beautiful stuff. And you say you started with no money. I started with no money. What happened was, when I realized that there were people like me, there were students like me who would want African wears but can't get it and even on time because it takes sometimes two months for them to get it when they yeah. give it to the tailors. Yeah. So I devised a, a plan where and I brought out an, a, an ad, order and receive in a week. So I took the fabrics from the students, the students, then I take it to my tailors. Before that, I've already negotiated with one tailor who had also left um, the um, polytechnic and okay. he did fashion. Mm. So he's a qualified um, fashion designer. Yeah. So I negotiated with him that, okay, now, I, this is what I want to do. Instead of taking one week, how best can you push it down to, let's say, three days? Yeah. So we agreed on a three-day period and where he has to... Production time. Production, that has the lead time, three yeah. days. Then I will tell the student that now we can finish in one week. 
So they realized that now in one week, three, four days' time, they are receiving their products. Wow, that was a So that, 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 that was how I started the business. So I took fabrics from students and people around my area, then I, I give it to the tailors, I take it back, then I deliver and I make my profit from there. And then I was making, that, that was high for me, three Ghana <laughs> CD as profits. Oh, wow. Trust me, that was how much I made. I think it was between three Ghana CD and five Ghana CD as profit then. But what I was looking at is giving them the satisfaction and yeah. making sure they get their products right on time and feel very happy wearing them. And that was obviously going to bring them back. Because exactly. They the because they know that uh, like I adhere to our timeline. Mm. So that is how it started on campus. And um, I think about a month later, I had to get money from a friend okay. as a, lo a soft loan um, to produce in bulk. Mm. And I started going to room by room. So oh. the Conti floor, that 11-story building, I have climbed several Whoa. times on campus. I hated even getting to the 8th floor. Trust me, <laughs> I had to go every evening right after lectures. Mm. So from 6 o'clock, I packed my stuff. And I even had to go to a friend's mom's um, um, place to get some suit. Because you know oh. campus, when it gets yeah. to matriculation, matriculation yes. So we packed that. Then I go away. I started with some friends, but later they thought it was tedious. Mm. So they left. Wow. So I had to do everything on my own. You had your own go vision. to room by room, selling it. Sometimes you go no sale yeah. and you come back. We are, I remember we had to go and do an exhibition at Garden City University. That was the first time. I took about five of my friends and my brothers there, like took a car from Kumasi to that place. Yeah. And we sold nothing. Wow. So we came back with all the stuffs. And it was very painful. And I had to feed all of these people yeah. and stuff. So... Uh, it has been a very tough journey, but... Uh, well, I, I mean, this is a journey worth mentioning. Yeah. You started on campus. I, yeah. I want us to take a tour through the shop and see some of the amazing things you have here. But let's, let's look at one thing that has to do with um, starting off campus. Yeah. Your parents have paid your bill for you, or should I say school fees, for you to go study and then um, come out as a professional, I mean a medical. Uh, doctor, or you, like you said, you went into the hairball part, and then all of a sudden you say, "Nah, I don't want to do this. I want to get into fashion." Was it easy for you? Was it an easy task for well, you? No, it wasn't. It wasn't easy. You know, one thing I believe in is whatever you believe in and you think is going to work for you, you don't have to let your parents de de like determine for you. But this what? Is Ghana. Yes, what you need to do is to prove to them. Mm. that this is what you want to do and you can do it well and this is the returns that they should expect okay. because I remember there were, when I started I think three months later my dad called me and he sat me down and asked me now this is what I'm doing how am I going to cope with my studies yeah. and trust me I proved him maybe he was an understanding dad so yes he, he has to because and the point is before your parents who understand you need to prove to them yeah. you can't just say with your mouth of course because i made sure that i was always on class go to the lab that's everything that i'm supposed to do after lecture time i moved to my business so mm. i moved to town to gather my fabrics take it to my tailors for them to sew then i bring it back to campus and deliver and stuff and normally i leave the, the, the hostel around, let's say, 8 o'clock and get to um, law faculty and go and study and come back around 12. Mm. So it, it's all about time management, okay. right? And making sure that you are pushing each time to something that you're doing. Yeah. Because trust me, those periods, there are students who are either sleeping, oh, yeah, chasing yeah, yeah. after girls, yeah. playing video games and watching movies. Mm. Instead of me Every doing soccer. all... Exactly. Instead of me doing those things, I would rather want to put that one into my business and build my life from there, mm. right? So that is how we started, and I had the passion for fashion too. Trust okay. me, yeah, I had the passion. Because when you wear good stuff, you feel confident. Of course. Trust me, and because you are dressed by the way you dress. You dress so yeah. if you dress anyhow, that is exactly the way someone you. is going to address you by. Mm -hmm. So I realized that it's one industry that I can really also function well and gather a team of people who are expertise in this area and we push it to the next level mm. so basically that is how it started so for you parents didn't i mean your parents didn't have any problem with you with you doing it let's let, let's let's get through the shop because i really want our viewers to know all the things we have here and some of the beautiful things we do provide here so for you it was quite easier your parents did understand you and so you were able to do it but let's look at 
stepping beyond the parents' boundary and becoming who you are. 2013, this journey started. Yeah. Tell us. Today, we see this beautiful edifice and everybody should be satisfied and happy. But moving beyond campus, getting this beautiful edifice and all that, how was the journey in between that time? 2013 <sighs> till 2019. It's like, been six years. Yeah. How's the journey been shared with us? Very tough. You know, um, as I said, if you want to do something, you have to do it well. Mm. And you don't just go into something because someone is doing it. If you are coming in, you have to make sure you commit to the work. Mm. Um, I have to study the business because I have to learn the business. Okay. So you don't just set up a business and expect it to explode. You need to be part of the business. You need to learn the business and you need to grow with it. Mm -hmm. So per my understanding and my knowledge, I realized that it is something that I need to commit to it. Okay. So I had to grow and I did some market studies and realized that um, campus in terms of market um, share sure. and the market space wasn't that conducive to grow my business. So mm -hmm. I think in 2015, when I left campus, that is when I made a decision that I have to move out of campus because anytime they go on vacation or recess, it means that you are, now, yeah. you, you are not in business. Mm -hmm. And you can't treat a business like that if yeah. you want to move into an international fashion brand. So I had to um, look at different avenues and fortunately for me, so this is what happened. Share with us. One, one day I was coming from the hospital. That, that time I was at Kumasi South Hospital. Okay. So I, I, was, I was going to town to get um, some fabrics. And I realized that there were some fashion shops in a doom. Okay. So I had an idea that, okay, why not talk to some of these fashion brands which were not Ghanaian mm. style or Ghanaian made fashion brands if they can stock my product. Okay. So the initial idea was to go to uh, Ultimate Fashions. Yeah. I went there several times. He didn't give me the hearing. Wow. But one day when I was going, I saw another shop, Justin Fashion, at Edu. Mm. Mm. So I walked into the, um, the shop and I asked him, and he has a very big space. So yeah. I asked him if he can like, allocate a small portion so that I can stock my brand. And that was the motive. I just wanted my brand to be there so that people can also yeah. assess it yeah. because I was on campus. So through that, we became friends. And one day I walked in there, he told me, hey, looking at how nice your stuff is and how detailed it, it is and comparing to the international standard, yeah. I think you need a place where people who want this class of stuff can assess you. So he told me that he was going to get a shop at the mall and I can also give it a try. And that is when I took a number from him, called the leasing agent and started a negotiation with him and it, it was tough. Funny enough, that time to my whole life money was 1,800 Ghana City. I was going to ask you, I mean, <laughs> taking a shop in the mall and it's not just one shop, we have this big edifice and I know we will move into the other one where yeah, we have one, the yeah. shoes and the slippers and sandals and all that. A graduate yeah. from KN University. Having 1,800 Ghana, Ghana City. How did you get this beautiful? It space? was serious. You, you seemed to be very confident in what you wanted to yeah, do. Yeah, because see, I believed in the, uh, in the vision. Mm. And I believe in where this vision can take me. One thing as a young entrepreneur you have to do is you have to learn from the successful people okay. if you want to become successful. Mm. So when I went into this um, um, industry, I realized that I need to learn from who are the people who have actually made it in, in this industry. Yeah. Talking of the Zara, the Louis Vuitton, the Paul Smith. Now, Amancio Ortega, he is, the, I think, the third richest or fourth richest yeah. across the world. Mm. And he did fashion. That's yeah. the CEO of Zara. Yeah. So it tells you that there is a huge opportunity out there. Mm. So I had to, uh, how do you call it, follow their footsteps and look at how they take their brand to. So I came to the mall. My whole life money was 1,800 Ghana. <laughs> they gave me, let's say, I'll call it the prospectors and they asked me to bring down a security deposit of 50,000 Ghana. That's about $11,000 or so. Then That was even the... Before you get a space, wow. that was a, they call it the security deposit mm. to give them the assurance that you, you can manage this place. To, yeah. And my whole life money was 1,800 Ghana city. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, was serious. Yeah, Trust I shouldn't me. be laughing at this, but... And, and that was my deeper, like my serious moment in life. Mm. Where you turn around and there is no one to go to. I went around, someone gave me a direction that I can get a, a, a bank guarantee or a, an insurance guarantee. Mm. I went to all the banks that I can think of, all the insurance in, companies in Ghana. Nobody was paying no attention. one was ready to help me because, because I didn't have what it takes. Because they don't know you and exactly. who are you to be given that. Trust me, that was a serious moment. And I think it also helped me a lot. Mm. 
-hmm. Because then I had to learn the things that I didn't know. I had to learn how to write my own business plan. Okay. I had to learn how to write my income statement and everything. I have to learn how to sell. And that was the period within one month, I learned a lot about sales and I was, uh, I think in a month, I was able to sell close worth of 10,000 Ghana CD. Whoa. Using my WhatsApp because I didn't have any shop outside campus and we're on vacation. Mm. So I placed an ad on Facebook and I'm sure a lot of entrepreneurs have gone through this. Yeah. You place an ad on Facebook, people ask you how much, how much, how much, and yeah. no one comes back. Yeah. And it's very painful. Yeah. So I was asking myself, how do I bridge this gap? How do I get this prospective client to now purchase my product? Mm. Now, it means that you need to learn a lot from the customers. And yeah. this is the part that I learned that actually helped me a lot. Yeah. So I had to raise over 10,000 Ghana CD within that period through my phone, Amazing. selling the clothes online, having a connection with direct customers. I had to, I had to also, uh, how do you call it, um, get to my friends and talk to them if possible they can help me with some funds which some of them did okay so i i will be very grateful for some people i don't want to mention name now yeah, i'm but pretty sure they don't yeah they know themselves trust me they really helped me um getting the space and taking it from there and i had to also negotiate with my suppliers to help me get some fabric some credit and, okay. and also put it and put my team together so it was a very tough journey but um in short i was able to um, um, put, this put this together and here we are 2017 April 20th we set up the shop at Kumas City Mall, City Mall. Yeah. two years down the line there's something I want to find out from you you see you see all these beautiful stuff and somebody would ask okay so do they produce them himself does he go to some people like you were doing on campus take the material take it to a fashion designer so the person does it or you have an in-house where it is done because one of the things a lot of people I realize a lot of people do is that now they take the materials take it to the fashion designers it's done for them then they put their logo or logo stickers in them and that is it so how are you doing because looking at all these things how are you able to get all these things done and stock your shop yeah so one thing you have to also understand in business is teamwork mm -hmm. it's very key most people don't understand that aspect of life you can do everything on your own yeah right it's about you pulling the best mm -hmm. so i have um, two fashion designers who are graduate from Polytechnics. Okay. I have um, five, let's say, fashion designers and tailors who have over 15 years experience in sewing. So it tells you going for the best. Mm. And I have to also learn from them. Yeah. Right? And bring them together as a team. Because you are going to manage egos now. Exactly. Everybody is the best or something. Exactly. So you, you, you have to learn how to manage a team and get the best out of that. The most important thing about you looking for the best and having a standard that they have to follow. So I had to pull all these people together and come as a team, as a company, so that we can push the agenda forward. So I have a very strong team, 24-7. They are working every day. As we are talking now, they are the production side. And we have a factory now. So, oh yes, we've started and we are looking forward to expanding to over 30 workers. It means um, you are not stopping anytime. No, 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 no. no. Let's, this let's is a full-time <laughs> business that we want to do. So <laughs> you are not stopping anytime. It's about you soon. getting the right team. Uh, uh, it's about getting the right team. Now, I saw these things. I mean, these shirts and ladies' dresses and all that, all the jewelry. Do you do the jewelry as well? You have a team that works on that? As I told you, you have to look for the best team. Mm. And these are not people who does, like, they are part of the business. Okay. So I have to employ them into the business to get that thing done for me because you are looking at seven customers. You can't only do African wear. Mm -hmm. You need to, like in terms of fabrics, you have to look at if someone walks into your shop, he can get a shirt, a trouser, a and shoe, get, get an accessory, an accessory a belt it. or whatever. Mm -hmm. If it's a lady, she has to get a dress, she has to get a necklace, she has to get some bangles, she has mm -hmm. to get some slippers, shoes or whatever it is. So... It's, it's a big thing, and this is a retailing aspect of it. So you can't just go out there and just take any person's yeah. uh, something that he or she has done. Mm -hmm. So you have to get the best team to work with. Amazing. So this is a whole teamwork. As a company, we don't take products from outside. Everything is done in-house. In -house. Wow. That is why we have our logos and everything on it. So we keep track of the details before it comes out. We make sure that it passes our standards yeah. that we think customers want. Mm. And we listen to customers a lot. So those of our customers who have, we've worked with so far, trust me, 
they are always happy to come back and they keep referring people because they are a priority. We want to make sure that they, they, they have the confidence when they wear our product and they can sure. refer people to us. So that is like the key. That is the key in our business. So this is a centric. 360 business, man. Trust like me. Everything. If you're able to pick up a shirt, you should be able to have uh, a watch or you should be able to have something to go with it. You should be sure. able to have so a shoe. So from head to toe, everything African, just walk into Gamel Clothing and you can have everything. Mm. And this is not the only thing we do. Okay. We, we also have the service part where we do custom-made designs for um, um, clients who want custom-made stuff. So oh, wow. apart from the ready-made ones that we have in store, mm -hmm. you can also walk in and tell us what you want. So we have to custom-made it for you. Isn't, isn't, that, isn't that expensive? Because I know in the UK, for instance, you can't walk into... Uh, you know, a fashion house and say, I want you to do this for me. I mean, it means, it means you, you are the prince or something. Yeah, we, with us, that makes us different from the rest of the, the brands. We, are, uh, we understand the Ghanaian market and we understand how we want to grow the fashion um, industry now. So for now, whether you are placing a custom made order or you are picking something in her, uh, at, the, at the shop, mm. it goes for the same price. There is oh. no difference. There is wow. no extra so cost. So even if I bring my own style, it's still going yes. at the same price no need for me to no top. need for you to top up or do wow. anything and we tell you our timeline this is how long it's going to take for us to produce when we you accept then we move ahead and get it done for you and we make sure we deliver on time too amazing amazing yeah. so ladies and gentlemen i'm speaking to the ceo of gamel clothing right here in Oseiko. i mean there are people who come in as well kumasa i mean but you've seen all that they do have here and these are custom made right here in Oseko, building a team and making sure that others also get to have their jobs and produce quality stuff. Now, I've seen so many things here, and I see there's another shop where you have the shoes, the shoes you have slippers, yeah. and there's another. So I want to check that one out, sure. and then we come and wrap it up here, because there are people who want to know if you do deliveries. I mean, there are people outside who, who, who are interested yeah, in sure, we do. a lot of African prints and all that. How do they get in touch with you? When we are back from there, we check on all that. All right. Okay. okay. All right, so we're just walking into the shop where we have the shoes, we have the slippers, the sandals, and belts, everything that there is to it. Wow, beautiful shop. Thank everything you. right on point. So tell us, we saw from the other side all the things that you do create yeah. and all that. What about these ones? Are all these also locally made? Everything you see here, Ghana made products. That is, that is one core value of the Jamil clothing brand because we are the Ghanaian lifestyle fashion brand mm. and we are talking about a lifestyle fashion brand being a Ghanaian then everything we have to do has to be Ghanaian centered mm. we are looking at providing jobs for the skilled labor okay we are looking at giving the Ghanaian people what they already know and selling the Ghanaian culture to the outside world okay. so if we want to sell those things to the outside world and give back the Ghanaian people what they know already. Mm -hmm. We have to make sure it has the element of Ghana in it okay. or African in it. So everything we do here, and you can even look at it from the setting, yeah. our designs and everything we do has to be purely African. That's why we have the wooden yeah. um, interior designs. And mm -hmm. you, you can even look at, and we have one of the slippers, we have to use jute. And yeah. these are typical, typical Ghanaian yeah. Um, uh, materials and these are things that every Ghanaian know. But how, how comfortable is it? I mean, wearing this. Trust me, with, with we coming out with this and with my experience with this jute slipper, right? One thing it does is it actually massages the feet. The feet. Wow. And you come uh, in from a health background. Exactly. You know how <laughs> this does. So you know you've worn shoes and all these sneakers for the whole long. Mm. Now we can. You need to ease up a bit and look a, a little bit yeah, casual. Yeah. And probably working within your vicinity, you would want to wear something that is light, that actually massages your feet and still look African. Wow, wow. I, so I mean, I'm, I'm everything a, we do here are basically Ghanaian I'm, I'm highly impressed that I can see people walking into the shop and checking on. These are really quality materials. I'm sure as I pick one of these, somebody is saying, NY, buy this one for me. So these Definitely. are also made right here in Everything Ghana. Everything you see here are made and assembled in Ghana by Ghanaians. Wow. So yeah. who wants this one? Maybe I should be buying this for somebody. <laughs> a, lucky, a lucky viewer should be a wearing this. A lucky viewer this. should be wearing yeah. it, yeah. 
but you can come through, I mean, inside the Kumasi City, City Mall, Mall and pick it up anytime. So, like I was asking earlier, do you do deliveries? There are people outside of Ghana who want to have access to this, who want to wear some of these beautiful stuff, and they want to buy them, but they're asking... Exactly. Hey, so, you know, we, we, we are in the technological world, and this world is becoming global. So what we do is we have social media pages, okay. um, Facebook and Instagram and Twitter. Mm -hmm. You can follow us there and request for what you want because right. we do daily updates of our designs and stuff. And you tell us what you want. And, and we've also partnered with DHL because okay, it's one of the delivery trusted services. delivery services that mm -hmm. we know of. And that is how our customers who have working, who have ever bought from us online, get their products. Mm -hmm. and Trust me, I can tell you that it's very, very reliable. You can get it on time without anything happening to your product. Okay. These are some of the amazing bags and um, artifacts and all these that are done right here by Gamel, right here in Kumasi. You were talking about how people could reach you. Social media, phone contacts, any way they can actually get in touch with yeah, you. Yeah, so you can contact us through our social media platform with the name Gamel Clothing, G-A-M-E-L. Mm. And the clothing is C L O D I, and that is how we spell it. The same name across all social media platforms. Okay. Um, we have an e commerce website mm -hmm. which we'll be launching very soon. So, prospective customers and our customers should expect that. And that will have an inbuilt delivery system and price and everything. Wow. All you need to do is to log into the website. Gamel Clothing, we've already obtained the domain. Okay. We are just putting some finishing touches to it to and it will come out very soon. So it's gamelclothing.com. Simple like that. Go there and you will get everything you want. And uh, we have an email to gamelclothing at outlook.com. Okay. Gamelclothing at outlook.com. Just send us an email. Tell us what you want. If you are li um, listening to us from outside Ghana, you want us to partner and stock your shop, mm -hmm. let's say outside or wherever it is, let's talk and let's see how best we can partner and also start stocking from there because we are looking for international partners too. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So what about, I mean, maybe there's a company in Ghana, there's a big shop, they have a big shop, they also want to stock them with you because now it's, it's a big brand, there's a huge brand that everybody should be looking out for now. So if they also want to have your materials stocked in their shop. Is sure, that sure. We, we, are, we are open for such businesses. What is very important to us is to build in the uh, Gamel clothing brand. Mm. So we can go into partnership and look at the things that is actually going to move at your end because the location is very keen to to us. So we don't just talk anywhere. Yeah. We look at the location and how the brand can fit in. If we check all these things and realize that you have what it takes to contain our brand, then we can go ahead and stock mm. the brand too. Amazing, amazing. So guys, just check it out. He talked about it on social media, Gamel Clothing. And it's spelled G A M E L, and the clothing is C L O D I N. So check them out on all the social media platforms. But is there a contact, like a phone number? Yes, we have um, a phone number 0557 925022. This is a company line. So when you call, we have our able men who will respond to you and make sure you get what you want. If it's something that they have to refer to me, they will definitely give you my personal contact and you can get through me, then we can talk in business. I'm talking to the investors, so <laughs> if you're an investor out there, mm. we want to make this big, we want to make this the African fashion brand. So if you're an investor out there and you are looking for where to put your money with um, safe returns, look no further, come to Gamel Clothing, we'll look forward to you and have a negotiation and see how best we can push the brand out there. Thank yeah. you very much, Gabriel, for welcome. talking to us. And I love your outfit as well. Thank this you is very much. Your own product, right? Yes. Of course. I have to wear <laughs> what I speak of. Maybe I should be changing my shoe and. Definitely. Don't <laughs> worry. The next time you see NYDJ, you have to see him in Gamel clothing. Of we, course. I we mean, are going to start clothing him for all his programs. So don't worry. Yay! <laughs> so my that's cameraman special, wouldn't enjoy some. He wouldn't. That, that would be a special <laughs> offer for NYDG. <laughs> thank you very much. Thank you yeah. very much, Gabriel, for speaking to us. Thank you very much. I really appreciate it. Uh, we love it. I mean, for us, we are in to support all exactly. the business, especially coming from where we are, where people think nothing is happening. It's, it's been an eye opener. I mean, it's been the story will go a long way to inspire so many others. A lot. Coming out of campus and hitting those big, working with your business. And I love how. You are so serious about your business yeah, and you how you to. pay attention to details. It's my prayer and I hope that you continue to keep it up as um, the business source. Employing people and giving them businesses, this is amazing. Sure. Thank you very much for 
coming on to the show today. All right, thank you very much. All right, yeah. all right, guys. So you just watched it as um, BTM Africa spoke to the CEO of Camel Clothing, located right here inside the Kumasi City Mall. We are back same time next week. Have a great time.